Hello everybody, it's Jane. Um, I just wanted to read you another story today and this one is called The Penguin Who Wanted to Find Out. Cute little penguin there. And this book is written by Jill Tomlinson. It's illustrated by Paul Howard and it's published by Dean. Look at those beautiful illustrations. How do you know we're at the bottom of the world? Otto asked his friend Leo. Your father told my father, said Leo. Your father knows everything. Otto thought for a moment. Then he shouted up at Claudius, Dad, there are lots of things I want to know about. Please talk to me. A beak came down and Otto looked into Claudius's face for the first time. I'm sorry, Otto, said Claudius. I hadn't realised how grown up you are now. What would you like to know? Why haven't I fallen off? asked Otto. Fallen off what? The world. Leo says we live at the bottom of the world. We do. Antarctica is called the South Pole. But you won't fall off. Why not? Because I say so. Now we'd better stop talking and join the others. A blizzard is coming and it's going to be a very, very cold night. Otto wanted to ask what a blizzard was, but he soon found out. The wind got stronger and colder. Snow was driven at them harder and harder. Otto, come under the feathery flap on my tummy, said Claudius, and I will protect you. They shuffled across the ice towards the other penguins who were huddling together to keep warm. Otto had never been so cold. He thought that the snow and the wind would go on forever. I didn't like that, said Otto, when the wind had died down at last. Well, you just have to get used to it, said Claudius. One day, Claudius said, You're big enough to walk beside me now, Otto. Soon you'll have all the other chicks to play with. What other chicks, Otto said. There's only Leo and me. But Claudius was right. Otto and Leo were just the first chicks to hatch. Now all the grown-ups were shuffling around with chicks on their feet. At first, Leo and Otto were the only ones big enough to leave their father's feet to play. One of the new chicks wanted to join in, but he was too little. What's your name, Otto called. Gusto, the little chick called back. Can I play with you next time? When you're big enough, Otto replied. I'm not very big outside, but I'm enormous inside, said Gusto. You're going to have trouble with that one, laughed Claudius. Why, asked Otto. Your first chick, Claudius explained, it's your job to look after the others. It was true. The very little ones didn't understand that they must stay together to be safe. And Otto had to keep rounding them up. Come back, he yelled. I'm first chick and you must stay close to me. Oh, you are bossy, Otto, grumbled Gusto. The next morning, Otto called up Claudius. I have, I have an asking sort of feeling in my tummy. What is it? You're hungry, replied Claudius. Let's go and see if the ladies are back from the sea. The ladies? Yes, they've been eating fish and things so that they can feed you and the other chicks. I'm hungry too. Otto, I shall have to say goodbye and go off to sea to find some food. I've had nothing to eat all winter. Otto was horrified. Don't leave me, Claudius. I need you. You'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll find a nice auntie to look after you. Otto had never been away from the rookery of penguins before. The bottom of the world is very big, he whispered. Look, Otto, said Claudius. Here's Anna. She'll be a good auntie for you. I don't want an auntie, said Otto. I want you. Claudius rubbed the top of Otto's head with his beak. I'm sorry, he said, but emperor penguins have to get used to different mothers and fathers when they're growing up. We look after each other. Can you look after me? How? My asking feeling inside really hurts, said Claudius. You can help by letting me go. Otto knew what he had to do. He waddled around to Anna. He's our first chick this year, said Claudius. I shall be very proud to, to be his auntie then, said Anna. 
Open your beak and I'll give you some fish soup. In a few minutes, the asking feeling in Otto's tummy had gone, but so had Claudius. Luckily, Otto was so busy during the next few days that he didn't have time to miss Claudius. As the ladies came back from the sea, all the fathers disappeared one by one to feed themselves. Otto had to look after the chicks. When they began to get cold, Otto and Leo collected them into a tight huddle, but one chick stood all by himself looking out to sea. It was Alex, the last chick to hatch. Otto knew he must get him into the huddle quickly. Where's daddy? wailed Alex as soon as Otto reached him. I expect he was hungry, Otto said. Stay close to me and I'll look after you. That's what emperor penguins do. They look after each other. Otto tried to push Alex into the middle of the huddle, but he wouldn't move. I want to stay with you, he said. Oh, bossy chick has a baby, laughed Gusto. Alex, this is Gusto, said Otto. He talks a lot. Can you tell stories, asked Alex. I like stories. Where do I get a story from, asked Gusto. Out of your head, said Otto. Start with once upon a time and just carry on. So that's what Gusto did. Soon, little Alex was so happy listening to the story that he forgot how cold he was. Later, they went to find Auntie Anna. Two chicks to feed, she said. I'll have to go back to sea again. Does that mean I'll have to get used to somebody different, asked Otto. Yes, said Anna kindly, but that's what we penguins do. I'll get used to it, said Otto bravely. As it turned out, Otto enjoyed meeting all the different grown-ups, especially Justin. He asked him all the questions that he would have liked to ask Claudius. In fact, he asked so many questions that sometimes Justin felt tired. Just one more question for today, said Justin. When can we go to Boggan? Otto asked. I've seen the grown-ups slide across the ice on their tummies. It looks fun. You'll be, you'll be able to toboggan when you have your adult feathers, Justin said. When will that be? That's two questions, Justin smiled. He moved away, but he called back on, over his shoulder. Soon. A few days later, the cold wind began to blow and Otto knew he had to get the small chicks into a huddle. It was easier now. There was gusto to tell stories. Alex crept up to Otto after the huddle. Otto, he said, I think I'd better tell you something. You're going bald. Otto looked onto his tummy. There were patches of down missing and thick white feathers showing through underneath. Yippee, he shouted. Don't you mind, said Alex. Mine, said Otto. Going bald means I'm becoming a proper penguin. Soon, Leo and all the older chicks had ball patches too. They all wondered what was going to happen next. It was, an, it was another first chick who told them. Her name was Josie. Otto met her on the edge of the rookery. You've shed all your down, she said to him. That means you're ready. Really? Josie waddled all around him. Yes, really. You've got all your adult feathers and now you're waterproof. What about me? Otto waddled around her. There's a tiny tuft left on your back. Shall I peck it off? No, it has to come off by itself when the feathers underneath are oily enough. Otto couldn't, Leo couldn't believe Otto was a proper penguin at last. How about me? He asked. You have two bits of down left on your back. Oh, please peck them off, Leo begged. No, Otto said. You must wait, Leo groaned. We're always waiting for something. Yes, Otto grinned. I'm having to wait for you before we go to sea. But don't worry, I'm not going without you. The next day, none of the grown-ups would feed Otto or the other penguins. You're not chicks anymore, they said. What do we do now, Leo wailed. We're starving. What do you think we do, said Otto. Where can we find fish and squid and all the things the grown-ups keep bringing us? The sea, Leo said, and he started to waddle off. Otto shot past him. Toboggan, he cried. It's quicker and it's fun. Soon he bumped into Josie. I've always wanted to do this, she said. Me too, said Otto. But do you think it's all right for us to leave our huddles? They'll be fine, she said. It's warmer now. Come on, I'll beat you to the sea. 
but their jobs as first chicks weren't quite over. When they reached the sea, the young penguins were afraid to go on. Otto remembered what Claudius had said. Penguins look after each other. Food, Otto yelled as he and Josie splashed in. Come on, it's easy. The other young penguins jumped in and began chasing fish and squid. They weren't hungry for long. It's like flying in the sea, said Otto excitedly. Then Josie showed him one last thing. It's called Penguin's Leap, she said, as Otto torpedoed up out of the water as fast as he could, landing on the cliff next to her. He felt so pleased with himself. He could toboggan, he could swim, he could feed himself, and now he could leap. Well, Otto, said Josie, do you like being a penguin? I'll get used to it, he said happily. The end. I hope you like that story, everyone. Bye.